guys welcome to my channel and today topic is ion exchange or demineralization process for the softening of hard water and this is the eighth video in water technology you can watch all my previous videos along with the corrosion and electrochemistry chapters in my channel and corresponding links was provided in the description so in the last class we already discussed about what is softening of water so converting of hard water into soft water is called softening methods so the thing is these calcium and magnesium salts are responsible for the hardness of water right so these calcium and magnesium salts are completely soluble in water if you convert these completely soluble salts into insolubles then you can easily remove the hardness of the water so by that in last class we discussed about the geolite process uh, in briefly geolite process uh, geolites are called na2jd they can represented as na2jd geolite is a, having porous texture and also two sodium ions on each molecules loosely bonded on the surface these sodium ions can be replaced by the calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 present in the hard water so we can replace the all cations present in the hard water by na plus ions but still water contains anions like chloride ions sulfate ions and bicarbonate ions and also na plus ions so this process is not completely fulfilled so still the anions present in the water we we have to go for another purification method so to avoid these things another advanced method is there that is called ion exchange process or demineralization process and is also called as deionized process the basic principle involved in this this method uses the ion exchange regimes these ion exchange regimes are two types cation exchange region and anion exchange region cation exchange region exchanges the all cations present in the hard water so calcium plus 2 and mg plus 2 ions are exchanged by the cation exchange region and all anions like cl minus so4 minus 2 hco3 minus chloride sulfide and bicarbonate anions are replaced by the anion exchange regions finally at the end of the process outcome water doesn't possess any type of ion that means cation exchange region replaces the cations anion exchange region replaces the anions so final outcome water doesn't have any cations and any anions that's why this process is called deionization process demineralization process this is the fulfilled ion exchange process so let's see what is ion exchange regions these ion exchange regions are polymers, resins. These are insoluble in water and having a cross-linked long chain organic polymers with having a microporous texture. So here how these ion exchange regions can be exchanged the cations and anions. So the functional groups present in the these ion exchange regions are responsible for the ion exchanging property these resins contain some functional groups those functional groups are responsible for ion exchanging ability so there we already known there is a two types of ion exchange regions one is cation exchange regime so cation exchange regime mean so it have a functional groups like cooh and so3 minus so3h when it is ionized cooh minus h plus and so3 minus h plus like this you can see here this is the cation exchange region so it has a number of h plus ions on its surface just like geolite geolite having na plus ions on its surface this cation exchange region having the h plus ions on its surface the same thing come you can compare this thing with the geolite so in geolite na plus ions is there here h plus ions is there that's why it's simply represent as R H R R minus H plus you can simply represent it as R H. So R H means it can easily gives the H plus ions. That means it can replace the all positive ions by giving the H plus ions. Okay. And anion exchange region. Anion exchange region exchanges the anions present in the hard water. The who is responsible for the exchanging process? Functional groups. The example of functional groups is NH2OH that means basic functional groups. So if you can see here 
anionic re exchange region it have a number of oh minus ions on its surface so it simply represent as roh or r plus oh minus so that means it can give oh minus ions this oh minus ion exchanges the all anions present in the water so here cations are exchanged by the h plus ions and anions are exchanged by the oh minus ions this H plus ions and OH minus ions combine each other and forms water molecule. So by removing all cations and anions, we are producing water into water. So there is no other ions. That's why this process is called demineralization or ionic process. You can see here. So this is the hard water. Hard water may contain calcium salts, magnesium salts and anions like Cl minus, SO4. All these things is there. So here, one of the calcium plus two or magnesium plus two ions are exchanged by the cation exchange region. So here cations H plus ions are released instead of, why? Because Ca plus two ions are captured here and H plus ions are released. And all negative ions, anions are exchanged, Cl minus, SO4 minus are captured here. Instead of that one, OH minus ion released. This H plus ion and OH minus ion combined each other and they form H2O molecule. You can see here the process. This process has two vertical tanks. First vertical tank having a cation exchange region. Cation exchange region means RH. So it has a number of H plus ions on it. So it has a number of H plus ions is there. If you pass the M plus 2 ions, calcium plus 2, magnesium plus 2 ion, this M plus 2 ions is captured on the cation exchange region. So one M plus two ion can replace the two H plus ions. So two H plus ions come down into the water. So when the one M plus two ions is captured in the ion exchange region, two H plus ions are released into the water. So what about the anions? All negative ions are not interacted anything with the cation exchange region. They directly come out into the water. So now in water, anions is there and H plus ions is there. This water is passed into the another vertical tank that vertical tank having a anion exchange region. So here anion exchange region having a number of OH minus ions is there. Number of OH minus ions is there. So now all anions are replaced by the OH minus ion. For example, if one Cl is captured by the anion exchange region, one OH minus ion enter out the water. So here H plus ions and OH minus ions come out the water and both are combined each other and forms a deionized water. Only water is there. There is no ions is there. That's why this process is called deionized water. So if you observe, if you remember the georide process, so it is the half of the process is called georide process. Why? Because there is only cations only exchanging. So if you see the half of the process here, this is also just like geolite process, but there is a Na plus ions are replacing here H plus ions replaced the Mg plus 2 and calcium plus 2. Okay. Let's see in the form of chemical equations, we have a RH. RH means cation exchange region. Cation exchange region is there. So when you pass the calcium plus 2 or magnesium plus 2 ions, that means hard water, when you pass over the these cation exchange region, so this calcium plus 2 is replaced by the H plus ions. H plus ions come out. So two H plus ions come out and one calcium. You, you have to remember calcium is a positive two charge. That means Ca plus two. So to replace the one calcium plus two, you require two H plus ions. That's why two H plus ions come out. So finally, slowly your, your cation exchange region slowly converting into R2Ca. Previously it is RH. But when it is working, it is finally converting into R2Ca and R2Mg. Remember it. But finally, water having only H plus ions, there is no Ca plus 2 ions, Mg plus 2 ions. Here only H plus ions is there. Okay. And this water is passed to next tank. So here, any Cl minus or any anions, they are replaced by the OH minus ions. It forms a RCl and OH minus ions. Okay. So here H plus ion and OH minus are combined each other and they form a water molecule. So but you can see here your cation exchange region is converting into R2Ca or R2Mg. Anion exchange region ROH is converting into RCl or R2SO4. This is called ex exhaustion. So 
fever cation exchange region and anion exchange region during the process they finally converting into other forms now they are unable to processing the softening process now you need to regenerate the exhausted resins so to regenerate the cation exchange resins you need to pass hcl why because you need to regenerate the h plus ions is there who gives h plus ions acids give h plus ions that's why when you pass hcl over the exhausted exhausted cation exchange region so now you can re again regenerate the cation exchange region rh like that anion exchange regions are can be replaced by the can be regenerated by the passing OH minus ions. OH minus ions given by bases. The best option is sodium hydroxide. When you pass the sodium hydroxide over the exhausted geolite, you can replace your uh, your anionic exchange region that, that is ROH. So these water contain more salts. This should be drained outside, no, not for the uses. Okay. This is the total process of ion exchange method. So here cations are exchanged by the cation exchange region and anions are exchanged by the anion exchange region. So finally H plus ions are released from the cation exchange region. OH minus are released from the anion exchange regions. So they meet and forms a water. So water is a water is not ionized. So there is no ions present in the water. This water. Let's see the advantages and disadvantages of the process. This process produces the water which having the hardness below 2 ppm. That means it is a very ideal water for the industrial applications. It have very very low hardness. Okay. And this process removing the anions as well as cations. That's why the produced water is called deionized water. And this process is also applicable for high acidic or high basic water also. So these are the... Uh, this is the best process to remove the hardness from the hard water and only disadvantage of is the process the equipment cost and it is used many chemicals so that is only the uh, disadvantage of process but industry can afford that cost why because they required pure water soft water when you pass the soft water into boilers you can avoid the many problems like corrosion scale sludge farming and foaming like this so many problems you can avoid by passing soft water so this is the best process for the industry and my question is can we drink this water after coming from the ionized deionized process definitely not why because our body requires some minerals but this process producing demineralized water deionized water our biological system required some ions so through the ions our biological system involved in say so many chemical reactions and produces energy so if you drink the demineralized water it will not provide any significance to your body so that's why you should take water at least 100 to 200 ppm hardness water so you, you should not uh, consume demineralized water so remember it and thank you for staying with me and please Follow me and share my uh, videos and please subscribe if you are not.